In the chess world, 2000 Delo is often considered to be the dividing line between a casual and expert chess player. Therefore, it's logical to assume that those above 2000 Delo play consistently high accuracy games that follow logical chess principles. As somebody who's been playing above 2000 Delo consistently for the past couple of years, I can assure you that is not the case. And today's game is a perfect sample of a typical blitz game of mine at the above 2000 Delo level. That being one of absolute chaos. So the game starts off pretty tame. I play c6 against d4 to bait my opponent into a Karo Khan, which he obliges to because I absolutely love the Karo Khan. And my opponent goes to knight c3. The typical move is to trade the pawns off and you can go knight f6 immediately and trade like this. But recently, I've been playing the knight to d7 first, which is known as the Karpov variation. And after knight to f3, knight g to f6, my opponent, now if he takes, I won't take back with the e-pawn and double the pawns, but instead I'll take back with my knight, which is the point of putting the knight on d7 before challenging the center. So... My opponent goes knight g to e5, and six moves into the game, we already have our first mistake. Why is this a mistake? Because of h6. And I'm sure a lot of you know, this is called the alien gambit. With knight takes f7, king takes f7, and moves like bishop to d3. I'm not going to pretend like I know the line that well. But I have horrible, horrible results with the black pieces against the alien gambit. So I didn't want to play h6 and allow this. Instead, I go e6. So now if my opponent takes, it's far easier to defend my position. Because I already have a pawn on e6 blocking this diagonal. And because my h-pawn hasn't moved, it still controls the g6 square, so the light squares in my position are nowhere near as weak as they would otherwise be. So after e6, my opponent goes bishop c4, which again is considered a bad move because of h6. I don't play it because I don't want to go into this line, so instead I go knight b6. Again considered a mistake because I don't play h6. We both know h6 is a move. I don't want to play it. He really wants me to play it. Okay, cool. So bishop b3. And again, h6 is the move. I go bishop e7, queen d3. And now I went h6. And my opponent takes. King takes. And the computer gives it a blunder, but the evaluation is only minus 0.4. Considering my opponent just gave up a whole knight for a single pawn, that is incredible compensation. And the problem is my position is so cramped, my bishop can't get out, my king is going to struggle to find safety. And because I've played h6, this g6 square is so weak. And after knight e5 check king g8, king g8 is the only move because if you go to f8, then knight g6 check, and if you go to e8, then queen g6 check, and you get mated. And you can see just how weak the g6 square is. But my opponent goes g4, which is a mistake, because of c5. And if my opponent takes, then I can trade queens. Obviously, he's not going to take, because he doesn't want to trade queens. And I wonder whether c3 is a move here to do this. Apparently there's moves like bishop b4 check, which makes sense. I didn't see this idea. g4 is a scary looking move because it looks like g5 is coming. Although I wasn't all that scared, even though the rook can come to the g file. I thought I'd probably have enough defense. I go knight bd5 with the idea of cutting off this bishop's scope. And if a move like c4 is played, then 
I guess I have bishop b4 check because c3 isn't a move and the king is forced to move unless you want to trade bishops, which, you know, probably don't want to do. So my opponent goes bishop d2 instead, stopping any ideas of anything coming to b4 because he can just go c3. I go bishop d6 because I would love to snap this knight off. If my opponent plays a lazy move like castling, I'm just going to take, remove the danger, and then go after the e5 pawn. Because remember, I'm up a piece because he sacrificed a knight on like move 10. But these are my extra pieces. They're not doing a whole lot. And don't mind the rook on h8. <laughs> my pieces can't get out. So it's like I'm not even playing with them. So being up a knight isn't isn't great. It's not really giving me a whole lot. So he goes knight g6 instead. Attacking the rook. So I go rook h7. Which is apparently a mistake. Apparently a5 is the move. And it's like if you take then I'm probably good actually because that knight was really good and you just traded it for a rook in the corner and you've lost an attacking piece I guess I'm going to play a4 to attack the bishop but I played rook h7 because I thought why what's the point in leaving the rook hanging when I can just move it I can protect g7 which might be quite handy if g5 is played opening up the g file so my opponent castles. And here the computer wants me to take on g4 and say that apparently I have no problems. If I move like rook hg1 I take on f2 which makes sense with a fork. But if I move like queen e2 then I return to f6 and try not to get checkmated. Even though the computer likes this, this is not a way to play for a human, especially in a blitz game, because I'm not going to find the defense. So I went for b5 with the idea of going with a5 and a4, but also to prevent the move c4 so my knight can't be removed from the d5 square and can keep this bishop from targeting the 6 pawn. Again, this is a mistake because I don't take on g4, which to a human would be a mistake realistically. My opponent goes h4, and again, I should be taking on g4, but I played a second best move, which is a5. a3 is played, and again, I do have knight takes g4, but computer actually wants b4, which I couldn't understand because of a4. I thought that it completely shut down the queen side again it just wants me to take which is like look I'm not going to take that so instead I played the practical move a4 to force the bishop back and then go for b4 because now I'm forcing open the queen side lines because the inclusion of a4 with an attack on the bishop means this pawn can't advance to keep the queen side closed my opponent goes g5 and I take which is a blunder because I need to play knight g4. <laughs> I just, it's just such an odd move for a human to play. I take it. And after takes, I've got a problem. Because if I take this rook, I'm going to get mated somehow on h8. So if I go king to f7, then he goes to h8 anyway and attacks the queen. And if I try to save the queen with a move like queen b6, then I lose the knight. So I can't take the rook. Instead, I play knight to h5, saving the knight and blocking off the file. Now my opponent could just play a move like rook h3 to double up Roxia, but he instead goes for knight e5, opening up the queen's scope on the rook. And also preparing the move g6. Here I should take the knight. Which in retrospect makes a lot of sense. But I wanted to keep the bishop as an attacking piece on the queen side. 
because I thought I was getting destroyed on the king's side, so I needed a way out, in a sense, by attacking him. Bear in mind, time situation. Opponent's got 20 seconds, I have a minute. So I have a bit of an advantage here, and I can also bank on my opponent not playing the best moves. So although the position looks horrible, and by the way, the computer still thinks that I'm better, which is crazy. <laughs> I don't know how. Um, I've got to be incredibly accurate. And I'm not. I play B takes A3. Hoping for B takes A3. And maybe I can take on A3. Oh no, the queen protects A3. What am I on about? I at least open up the queen side, right? Again, I should be taking the knight. B takes A3 is a mistake. Because of an insane move. Queen takes H7. And after king takes, rook takes h5, king g8 is the only move. And then you double up. And where is my king going? Because this knight covers f7. I can throw in a check first. And if the king takes, then I've got some kind of mating attack. Or my king can run like this. But he gets my queen off of the back rank with tempo, which is important. Because if this wasn't with tempo... Rook h8 would be checkmate. But the point is after the king moves, I can take the knight to give the f7 square, or I can run the king. And somehow my king survives. And the problem is, if after pawn takes king to b1, I can't save my king and my queen. If I save my king by taking the knight, then rook h8 check, king f7, and the queen falls. And this position is lost. I'm an exchange down. But more importantly, my opponent is winning everything on my back rank. So it's going to be more than an exchange down. But my opponent doesn't see that. He plays knight to f7. Here I need to find queen b6 to try and attack my opponent's king. And the point is that if this pawn takes... Then I have rook b8, and I'm trying to access the b2 square. If I move like bishop c3, then I have bishop f4. You can't retreat because of mate, and I'm actually the one delivering a crushing attack. However, however, I panic, and I take on b2. And if king takes b2, then I'm actually doing all right. But only if I'm very accurate. I mean, this is drawing. Apparently, I have the move knight to f4. Giving up the rook and taking on f7. And the knight's very well supported. And his king's vulnerable. Crazy. But my opponent goes king b1, which is more accurate. Because he uses his pawn as an umbrella. And with his king and his bishop situated like this... I can't actually attack his king anymore. And here I realise my attack's over. I, 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 I have won a couple pawns, but I can't attack him. And my queen's under attack. And if I take the knight, queen takes h7. I didn't see this idea of knight h to f4 saving it. I thought I couldn't take the knight, so I instead went queen e7. But this loses... Well, not losing immediately, but it puts me into a losing position after the move g6. And my rook is under attack, and the knight is defended. But the bigger problem is, I can no longer move this knight. Because my rook, well, you can actually give up the queen because rook h8 is mate. So, I can't move the knight either. And if I move my rook to a square like h8, then knight takes h8, and I can't take back because then my knight hangs and I'm getting mated down the h file. So, I do my best. I go bishop to a6, attacking the queen and trying to force it off of the diagonal. My opponent takes on h7 with check, which is a very natural looking move. 
Best move is queen to f3. Attacking the knight, supporting the knight, and just maintaining the pressure. Again, my rook can't move. Really. I can maybe go to h6, but after knight takes h6, g takes h6, rook takes h takes h5. This is an easy attack for white to convert. But with his queen under attack, he plays pawn takes h7. My king can't take it because it's defended by the queen. So king takes f7. And here my knight is hanging and the queen is hanging. So queen f3 check. I drop the knight back to defend my king. Apparently it was better to go to f4. Only mildly better though. But my opponent queens. And I have to give up my rook. And here I have 9 seconds. I spent all my time trying to find defensive resources. And I failed. And here I need to hold on. And I need to try to generate some kind of pressure on his king. Because even if I survive the attack... It's essentially two knights versus two rooks. I have a couple pawns, but it's completely losing. So I go knight b4. And my point is, if my opponent plays a move like rook d to h1, I'm going to take on a2, and if he takes back, then now I actually have some attacking chances. Apparently queen b7... Moves like bishop c4, and then looking to push this a pawn forward to promote is quite scary. If my opponent plays something random, okay, let's say he continues to defend the back rank. Bishop c4, king b1, a3, and the pawns get into a2, and there's nothing that my opponent can do about it. So the game's not over, but he's accurate, and he just takes. I take back. And queen takes c6. I go bishop b7, supported by the queen. And queen b6. And here is tricky. Because, again, the game isn't completely over. Because his king isn't entirely safe. Whilst my pawns are sheltering him for the moment, if I can mobilize them and gain control over the a2 square then a pawn landing on a2 will be devastating. So I go knight d5, attacking the queen and eyeing up the c3 square. And the problem is, if bishop takes, bishop takes, my queen defends the bishop. <clears throat> and again, a3, a2 is a problem. And my opponent needs to be very accurate here. If he plays, I don't know, a move like rook d to h1, then a3. And although I've got two bishops versus two rooks, the pawn is going to a2. And it's a big problem. Apparently, rook 8 to h5 is the move. And if a2 check, then the king can take on b2. I can win this rook, but okay. Let's pretend that rook isn't hanging. So let's say we instead have rook to g1, a3, white is still winning, but white also needs to be accurate. My point is, the game isn't completely over. But after knight d5, like I said, my opponent just needs to take. He goes queen b5. And knight c3. And he just hung his queen. And the game is over and he resigns because he's going to lose the queen. Mental that a plus 2200 rated player will blunder that. Don't get me wrong, I have blundered far worse. I'm not in any way <laughs> taking the piss out of my opponent because this is just the reality of chess. Time pressure, insane game that's taken so much thought and calculation comes down to it. And at the end of the day, knights are just tricky, right? They're tricky for players of any level. But the problem is, my opponent needs to take the knight. And I felt like that was just an automatic move. Because the queen's under attack, and knight c3 is coming. Any other move 
loses for white. A move like queen to d8, saving the queen like that. Then knight c3, king b2, knight d1 check, king c1. And I can even trade queens and play a move. What have I got? Bishop f3. And I just have two pieces for a rook. So, you know, you could argue that he should have seen bishop takes d5. And the game isn't over, but of course white is far, far better. But opponents, you know, players above the 2000 level, we're not gods. Really not. We're very beatable. As people in my Discord server will know who've played against me. Whilst I might swindle them towards the end... They can certainly get winning positions. And, you know, shout out if um, you know who you are. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it useful. And I'll see you in the next one.